Now it's time to create our first Git repository. And for now, we're going to do everything locally. So we're going to have a Git installed locally in our environment. We're going to create a Git repository in our computer and we're going to manage all the staging environment in our computer. So for now, for the first couple of lessons, we won't have any remote Git repositories like on GitHub or Bitbucket because I want to spend a little bit of time to let you understand how Git works and manages all your code and all your staging statuses inside your computer. In the future, we're going to create a new repo on uh, online services, for example, GitHub, and we're going to learn how to pull all the updates, merge, commit, and create new branches in this repo. So now we have to access our folder where we want to create Git. And always remember that Git needs a folder. If you create Git in a specific folder, you have to add that code only in that specific folder. So I created my custom folder here in my root inside sites, git repo, git tutorial. So I have to access this folder. In order to access this folder, let's go in the root and to access the root, just type CD. And if you hit enter in whatever folder you are, you're going to be pushed inside your base folder. Then in my case, in, inside user. So where I am now here, I can access the folder sites where my Git repo folder is. But if you don't know the actual name or what folder you have in this users all in your current location, you can always write ls, oops, ls. And if you write ls, you're going to see the list. Uh, your terminal is going to print the list of folders that you have in your specific location. So I need to access my Alicat folder where I am. So CD and write the name of the folder without forward slashes or anything. So now I am inside Alicat. Let's write again LS. I have all these folders. This is the standard um, folder structure of OSX. I need to access sites. This is the folder I need. So let's write CD sites. I'm inside sites. I can access the underscore git repo. So cd underscore git dash repo. And I want to access the git tutorial. So cd git tutorial. And of course, here we have a problem because my folder has a space as a blank space. If you want to avoid this problem, always try to not have blank spaces inside this folder. But sometimes you cannot control this. If someone creates the folder for you or you're working in a repo that is not yours, you cannot control the naming of the folder. In order to avoid this problem, you can simply write the name of your folder of your path inside single quotes in this way. CD single quote get tutorial. So we are saying to the system that this is a unique only single name and inside all the single quote, we can specify all the spaces that we want. So we won't have any problem. Now we are finally inside this Git tutorial folder that of course it's completely empty. Another way to access this folder if we start from scratch. So if we type CD dash dash, we are back of one space. If you just type CD, we are back to the base folder. So CD space dot dot, we go back only to one folder. So we go from Git tutorial to Git repo. If we type CD without anything, we go back to our basic folder. And if we type LS, we should get all the list of folders in our basic folder. If we want to access directly this Git tutorial folder, we can easily do it with one single line of code. So let's write cd sites forward slash underscore git dash repo forward slash git tutorial. And of course, because the Git tutorial has a space, always specify the single quote inside the name. Here we wrote just entirely the path, the local path where our folder is, so we can access directly this folder. And we are now inside Git tutorial without doing step by step. But if you're not sure, if you don't remember exactly your 
folder structure and all the name, you can always use the command ls to list all the folders that are in that specific directory. Now we have to create our first git repo and to create our first git repo we have to use one single command that is called init, git space init. The git in its space will initialize an empty repository in your location. So now we have an initialized empty, empty git repository inside this folder structure where we want. So inside Alicast site, inside git tutorial, and we have this dot git. So this is a hidden folder. In fact, if we access our folder structure here, we don't see anything. That's why I have my code editor Coda open on this git tutorial. And here I can make appear show hidden files. Here we have the dot git folder that git created to keep track of everything. In this folder, we have a lot of different things. You don't have to care at all about this folder. This is all managed automatically by the system. I'm just showing this stuff and accessing this folder to uh, show you and make you understand how Git works and where all our stuff are gonna go whenever we create something. And every time we commit a code, the code that needs to be pushed to a specific repo is gonna be stored inside this git and all our edits and all our, our the entire history of our git stuff is gonna be stored inside this git repo. So now let's do something. Let's create a file. For example, new file, let's call index.html. And I don't write anything. This is a completely empty file, as you can see. But here, git recognized that we have a new file inside this repository. So in order to check which file we have new and which file we added or which file has been modified inside our repo, we can write simply git status. Git status, we will give us the status of our git. We are on the first branch, so git can control different branches but we're, I'm gonna explain you what a branch is in a future lesson. For now, by default, a branch is created when you initialize an empty repo as a master, and we don't have any commit, but Git recognize that we have one untracked file, so a new file. Every time Git lists something in red, it means that it's a new file, it's not listed, and it's not added to the repo, so you don't have anything that you can commit. In order to add this file to the repo, we can do it in different way. First, we could do something like simply git add and write the name on the file, index.html. This is good if you wanna add one simple file, one single folder, or a specific section. But if you have multiple files, for example, an entire website, you cannot git add one by one. In order to add everything, just simply specify a dot. So git at dot will add all the files that you have in that specific repo. Enter, no confirmation, but it's good. Let's write again git status. And now our file, it's green highlighted. It means that it's inside our branch, but has not been committed. So it's unstaged, but he's inside, finally tracked inside our git repo. So now we could potentially commit it. Actually, let's do it. Git commit, it's time to commit. The commit command is that command that moves this file to your working folder inside your staging area. The staging area is, um, imagine it has a limbo. <laughs> it's like a virtual space where your code goes and remains there until you push your code to a specific repository online. So you have the working files, the working area, there is the, your actual folder, so index, .html right now it's in my working area. I added this folder to the git repo, to the git code. Now I'm using commit to push this file, to push these changes to the staging area. And this is really important because every time you edit something, you commit it to a staging area. If you edit this file again, Git will recognize that your working file is different from your staging area, so we'll give you an alert 
or will indicate that this file is changes so you can track which file has been updated. Let's do that. Let's commit by writing a specific message. To write a specific message, you can write dash M and then single quote. Inside the single quote, you can write whatever message that these messages are really useful for a user or another developer that needs to work, that has to work with your repository. So let's write initial index commit. So I'm stating that this is that just the initial status of my repository. I'm committing just the index file. Let's press enter. Now we have these initial git commit inside our staging area and a mode has been created. So we have one file changed, no insertion, no deletion. So this file hasn't been changed and everything is inside our stage. If we click git status, if we check git status again, we're going to have on branch master nothing to do commit. The working directory is clean. So Right now, Git is taking care of our index file that is new in our staging area. We didn't push anything to a repo, so everything is inside our staging area. If we access index.html and we write something, for example, h1 initial edit, and we save it. If we write again git status, we're going to have an alert or sort of like listing of all the file that has been modified. So this file index.html is inside our tracking but has been modified. So let's do it again. Let's git add everything. So the index.html now it's ready to be committed and we can commit again by writing the usual git commit m single quote edited index.html. Press enter. And now we have something here. We have the edited index.html file with one file has been changed in our case, the index.html, and we have one insertion. So it means that only one line of code has changed. If we write something like that, for example, we have all this stuff. So we have, in this case, nine lines of code has changed and we do exactly the same. Git status to check has been detected. Call git add, git commit. Now we have one file change as usual, our index.html and we have eight insertions. So the system recognized that we have eight more rows compared to the first one that it's inside here. So if we delete something and we delete this tree and we save it and we do exactly the same, git status, it's okay. Git add dot to add this file to the repo and git commit um, edited or row rows deleted index.html. Now we have one file change, but six deletions. So Git, it's so powerful and so cool that it can recognize whatever you did inside a specific file. So in this case, we added code and it recognized that we added eight lines of code, eight insertion. We deleted six and recognized that we deleted six insertion. So in the staging area, Git is taking care of tracking all the differences and all your stuff inside this specific environment that we cannot access and we don't care mostly because of course let's hide back the invisible file of git so in our working environment of our git repo we have only index.html but we changed this file three times and all these three changes are now tracked inside git if we're not sure what we're doing, if we're not sure what we edited before committing to a staging error, we can check the differences. We can check what happened to our file. So for example, if we access again the index.html 
and we write this stuff a bunch of times. So we simulated our code was heavily edited and we don't really remember how was our code, our initial file. After the last time we committed our edits on Git, we can check the differences between a staging file and a local file or a working file. First, let's check status as usual. Yes, we have modified. Let's write Git diff. Here, we're gonna have the full list of whatever changed. So here, recognize because we have a file called index.html inside our staging error and we have another identical file inside our working error and the two files are different, Git recognizes that these two files are different, so is listing everything is different. All the things there are not matching. So the first two lines are blank. So it means that the first stuff were identical. Here we have more codes. Every time specify a plus, it means that these things are added. Let's hit Q to exit this edit. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. We saw a lot of basic stuff of Git. We checked how to initialize a Git repository in our computer, how to uh, start checking if a file was edited in our repo, and how to add that specific file or all the files from your repo inside your staging area, and how to commit everything to your staging area. In the next lesson, we're gonna take a look on how to configure a remote repository, how to commit file to a remote repository, and how to check if our code was properly edited or not. Well, that's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel, and if you on, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website and take a look on all the different ways and methods that you can use to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!